Now, knowing the basics of transactions, let's start on concurrency control. As we discussed earlier, concurrency control aims to preserve the isolation and consistency of transactions in a database management system. In this section, we will focus on lock-based, timestamp-based, and validation-based protocols for concurrency control. Then, we will briefly discuss multi-version schemes that maintain several versions of each database object. Let's start with lock-based methods. A transaction needs to leave a database in a consistent state after it completes. It is not required to keep the database in a consistent state while in operation. The reason behind this is that the requirement is too restrictive and might not let us perform the tasks required within a transaction. A simple example is that if you want to perform a money transfer transaction, you have to add and deduct. And while one is performed and one is on the fly, the database state is inconsistent, which is okay as long as within the commit time, it returns to the consistent state. However, transactions may also abort, and that is where we need to bring in considerations about the inconsistencies they have introduced within the transaction. We briefly discussed the effect of aborts when we were discussing anomalies that can happen within the system. While the expected outcome of a transaction is to commit, we have to make sure the effect of those aborted will not remain in the system, and in case of interleaved transactions, does not affect transactions that use the changes made by the aborted transactions. Undoing the effects of an aborted transaction is also performed using a process called rollback. For example, say the transactions T1 and T2 shown here are banking transactions. T1 reads the value from account A and deducts 100 from it. T2, following that, reads the current value of account A and account B and adds 2% interest to each of them. Then T2 commits. Then T1 is aborted after T2 is committed. What happens is that even though the schedule is conflict serializable, when the abort happens for T1, the effect of interleaving is that T2 has based its calculations on T1's value, which is no longer valid. Bringing in possibility of aborts in the definition, we can redefine a serializable schedule as a schedule whose effects on any consistent database instance is guaranteed to be identical to that of some complete serial schedule over the set of committed transactions. Now, in our example, are we doomed or is there a cure? If T2 was not committed at the point where T1 aborted, we could deal with the situation with aborting T2 as well. This is called a cascading abort, which is followed by undoing the effect of T2 as well, called cascading rollback. But the problem is, at the point the T1 is aborted here, T2 is already committed. So at this point, this schedule is unrecoverable. Recoverable schedules are those in which transactions commit only after all transactions whose changes they read are committed. This means that if a transaction TJ reads a data item previously written by transaction TI, for the transaction to be recoverable, the commit operation of TI should appear before the commit operation of TJ. In this example, the commit operation of T1 should appear before the commit operation of T2. If transactions read the changes of transactions before them only after they are committed, the schedule is not only recoverable, but also does not have a need for cascading. However, what does that mean for concurrency and interleaving? 
a desired transaction for supporting concurrency in a database management system is a serializable recoverable transaction so that no action of any committed transactions is lost during any rollbacks. A typical way of achieving this goal in database management systems is locking, which is restricting access to a database object while another transaction is working with it. A lock used in this process is a small object which we associate with each database object. It could be shared or exclusive. A locking protocol is a set of rules for transactions to ensure safe interleaving so that the effect of interleaving is identical to a serial order. A lock manager, which is a part of the database management system that keeps track of locks, enforces this protocol and maintains the lock using a structure called lock table.